Let me introduce you to the Alien Pulse Rifle. No, only joking. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load, and this is the Puncher Armour, or the Kral Puncher Armour from Kral Arms of Turkey. Um, interesting looking, don't you think? Hmm, love it or hate it. Some people are gonna be like, what is that? Other people are gonna be like, Oh yeah, me likey. Myself, I think it's pretty good looking, actually. <laughs> I kind of like it. Ballpup configuration, PCP, uh, air rifle, this one is in 2.2. I'll read off uh, a few specs. Uh, before I do that though, um, if you've just joined us on the channel, uh, welcome. Uh, this is Rack and Load, as you can see. Um, Basically, the reviews that I do on here are not adverts. Um, I seem to find that a lot of, uh, especially airgun YouTubers, uh, their reviews are more like adverts. Okay, and I think they must get freebies off uh, off the companies that they do their reviews for. Not me. Totally independent. Don't care about annoying the manufacturers. I'll just tell you how it is. And there's a couple of things I don't like about this that I'll tell you about that probably will annoy the uh, manufacturers. Well, if they are watching, uh, Crowl, if you are watching, the trigger on this thing is awful, awful. But we'll get to that in a minute. But first of all, let's um, let's just read off some specs. Sorry about the uh, band-aid or uh, plaster, whatever you want to call it. Uh, cut my hand open. Another story. Nothing to do with shooting or, or anything pretty boring DIY in fact uh, anyway I digress um, right and so reading off some uh, specs then about the puncher armor okay so it's made from uh, by Krell it's PCP uh, available in 177 and 22 magazines uh, for the 177 are 14 shot and 22 12 shots I'll show you the mags in a minute uh, air tube capacity is or air cylinder 280 cc fill pressure 200 bar uh, it's made from aluminium the stock or as i like to call it the frame <laughs> um uh, yeah it's at aluminium overall length is 79 centimeters or 31.1 inches barrel length 53 centimeters or 20.8 inches weighing in at f approximately 400 400 four kilos Okay, side lever cock in, uh, manual safety catch, blah, blah, blah. Bullpup configuration, like I said. Now, sorry guys, just reading that off my phone. I've got all my notes on my phone, so. Um, so, what do you reckon? <laughs> Throw what you think in the comments below. 
Um, excuse this scope, it is just a test scope, uh, not the best scope, but it, it's alright, it's, it's one of my test scopes and it's it's good enough, it's good enough, it's got me good results on uh, certain air rifles. So let's take it from the top then and have a good look at this thing in the usual rack and load style, so taking it from uh, the stock end then, or the butt end, it's quite a nice um, sort of butt pad it's got like a chevron pattern on it nice shape sort of not too hard not too soft rubber it's just nice actually I, I quite like that and then moving along to the well it's sort of like I don't know how would you explain it you can't really tell the stock from the receiver I mean it is ball pop it's kind of alien pulse rifle stroke SA80 like <laughs> But yeah, moving on to, well, let's talk about the uh, cheek piece. I'm uh, flipping it around on the other side. Now, first of all, if you are left-handed, this is not the rifle for you, okay? I'm lefty. As you can see in the video, I'm shooting it left-handed. I am absolutely crap at shooting anything uh, apart from a pistol right-handed, okay? Um, so I had to shoot this left-handed to just get half decent results. So I'm left eye dom dominant as well. So even if I did try shooting it right handed, I won't be able to see much anyway. So, but this is your adjustable um, cheek piece. Um, it's, not, it's not bad. It kind of re reminds me of what you sort of get on, uh, you know, um, modern day um, tactical target rifles, you know, like the Ruger Precision. For example, it kind of reminds me of of that, but it's adjustable fire that screw. If you, what I did notice with it is um, you don't get much in the way of uh, height when mounting a scope. We're sort of jumping away from that onto sort of optics and stuff. You do get obviously a Picatinny rail, as you can see, but then the added on is this sort of uh, extra high bit of rail. Okay, I found even with that you need high mounts, uh, depending on what scope you're using. Um, you do need high mounts because, as you can see, the cheek piece at its lowest setting is still absolutely level with uh, the rail or the lower part of the rail. I mean, obviously, if that was a little bit lower, then you know it, you'd be uh, you'd be rocking and rolling. But I found that with with the position of it, you just need extra high mounts um depends on i guess you know the individual person but with me definitely i could, i mean i've just managed with that but to be honest i could have done with uh, higher mounts on it but anyway that's the um that's a cheap piece polymer so it's not sort of cold on the face like it you know aluminium would be or anything um looking at the bottom here you see like this recessed flipping it over a uh, bit of a recess there. Uh, that is actually storage area for a magazine. Now, if I just get a magazine, I'll show you the magazines as well. Two are supplied. This is 2-2 version, so they are 12 shot. Pretty much the same as uh, FX's uh, cassette style magazines. Um, yeah, they're all right, not too bad, but easy enough to load. I expect the 177s will be a little bit, little bit more fiddly, um, but you can store a magazine, basically pop it into the uh, stock like that, and that's pretty cool. If you're sort of out in the field, so to speak, just push it, push it out by giving it a bit of a press from the other side, and then that pops, uh, pops a mag out. I'll keep one in there actually, just so just so I don't lose it. So that's quite a good feature. It sits nice and sort of almost flush in there. So that's pretty cool. And they don't pop out too easily, so you ain't really sort of got to worry about losing one. Um, and then moving along to the rest of it, like I said, aluminium stock or frame, whatever you want to call it. Um, it does sort of say, Alien Pulse Rifle to me, or SA-80, more Alien Pulse Rifle. Um, but yeah, I kind of like the look of it. You can see the cylinder 
sort of housed there. Um, and the only the only part that is really exposed is where you fill it up. There's your filler area here, and then you've got your gauge up front. Okay. Yeah, I know. I hate it when they put gauges up front. Well, you've got to look down the muzzle to see how much air is in. You, you should know me by by now, guys. That is one of my pet hates, but. Could they have done it another way on this? Well, I don't know. But let's bear in mind, here in the UK, and I will emphasize this before I start criticizing some of the little bits on it that I don't like. It is under 500 pounds here in the UK. Okay, for a bullpup PCP, I think they're running at about 460 pounds. So that ain't bad, really. It ain't bad. So you can't, you can't really grumble. But, but anyway, so yeah, the, the rest of the stock, sort of aluminium, um, it's got like a, this bit here is uh, polymer, the front end, where the gauge is, um, and then you've got like, it looks like a, a Magpul, um, was it AFG um, grip, it's not obviously a Magpul one, it's, but it is pretty cool, it's alright, you know, it, uh, it aids grip, um, all polymer and then and this is this will be an interesting talking point the pistol grip right the pistol grip is polymer right it, it, it's okay it's got like these finger sort of grooves here it's not bad it's not bad but while we talk about the uh, the pistol grip now when I got this rifle when I was at the, the my local dealer who very kindly uh, lends me uh, test rifles got one of these out of the box and the pistol grip was completely snapped off okay don't know how it happened might have happened in transit or whatever and the review kind of started there and then for me uh, I wish I took a photograph of it to be fair um, but anyway yeah it snapped off and when I had a sort of closer look at it, there's just one screw sort of going into there and it's all housed in like plastic. And I thought, oh, dude, that is weak. That is weak. Um, you know, uh, what's the rest of this thing going to be like if that snapped off? So, not sure how it happened. I mean, it may, it may have been, well, it probably was in transit how it happened, but... It kind of got me a little bit worried, um, but having said that, I thought, you know what, I'm going to test this thing myself, and I've been holding it just by the pistol grip, giving it a bit of a shake, swinging it round. Um, don't you sort of try it at home, um, but, you know, I'm testing this for you guys, so it's kind of kind of my job, so to speak. Um, and it seems all right, but it, it did bother me when... Uh, we discovered that the original one that I was going to take, it had just snapped off and it was just, like I said, just one screw holding this thing on. But it must be all right. I mean, this one is, I've sort of swung it around, you know, and it is quite a weighty, weighty rifle. It, uh, just around the uh, four kilogram um, mark and that's unscoped as well. So throw on an optic. You know, it's quite a weighty thing, and while we talk about weight, it is heavy. Would you use this thing out in the field? Maybe. Um, I probably wouldn't, because I'm getting worn out holding this thing up to the camera. Well, I am sort of standing awkwardly, but um, it is heavy. It's definitely no lightweight. But the pistol grip, though, it's not bad. It's comfortable. Um, it's all polymer, um, so not sort of totally amazing, but it's all right. It's all right as long as it stays on. That'll be a bonus. Now, if you're not that keen on the uh, forend grip, in the box that is supplied with the uh, armor is this vertical grip, which is pretty cool. I didn't really try it to be fair uh, as I was sort of shooting this off my rest but this is quite cool and it doubles as a uh, bipod as well which uh, I think is pretty cool when I can open it. It is a bit fiddly, it's a bit stiff to be fair. That's it Paul. Um, 
I think this thing is pretty cool. Um, I should have tried it, Reddy. That one's a bit stiff. So that's quite a bit of uh, bit of bipod there, you know. And obviously it doubles as uh, as your foregrip. But that's quite cool. That's quite cool. But it is supplied. It gives you options, you know. Depends if you, you know, you're shooting this thing sort of. Uh, I don't know. In a more what's the word? stationary position rather than sort of uh, you know in the field that is a good option pretty cool and it just fits on via the uh, Picatinny rail which is underneath the, where that that grip is there via a screw it's fitted um, on the bottom of the fore end but so you can just undo do that and then just sort of uh, finger tight those uh, those sort of nuts there so that's pretty cool pretty cool options options we love options we love options now as i mentioned uh, the magazines are um sort of cassette style so they're kind of like spring loaded so you have to basically open one like that and then put your first pellet in and then sort of work backwards until it's full and then to load uh, the armor side cocking lever and then you just basically drop your uh I can never, how did i do this now <laughs> oh it goes in that side it's because i'm left-handed guys it's just totally all to all to hell with me all to cock it just drops in like that so there's your magazine sticks out a little bit on the left hand side but you put it in from the right pretty sleek obviously it won't sort of close up because it's got when it you, when you've used all your pellets up, you can't sort of close the uh, the lever and sort of uh, dry fire it with nothing in. So so that's pretty cool. This um, I'll just show you. If I can get it out there. It just slides in, by the way, just via that sort of recess. Then wherever you can see it, there's a bit of a like a line there. See it? That basically lines up with the uh, that little groove on the magazine that's pretty cool it's a little fiddly to start with until you sort of get the feel of it but it works all right um, it, just in case you're wondering this uh, little sort of knurled um, knob there that basically is the F for the FAC versions where you can sort of adjust the power this is a sub 12 foot pound version so um, it doesn't work, it doesn't do anything on this one, this one. But if you was to get like an FAC version, which they do do, that will adjust the power, so a power setting. I think on the other side it's got like a, I don't know whether you can see it. It's probably hard to see, but in there, there's like a plus and a minus. In there, where you, where you sort of adjust it via this, uh, this knob here. Um, so yeah, uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's not, it's not left hand friendly. Uh, that's for sure. Um, but um, you know, it's it's pretty cool. But and this is where it kind of goes downhill, as I sort of hinted on at the start of the video. The trigger, the trigger is awful. It really is. Now. While I was sort of just showing you, you know, sort of how to load the magazine, uh, if, if you guys aren't familiar with these, imagine the magazine is in and loaded, you just basically close the uh, the lever like that and you're good to go. And then you take your shot and then it's literally just cock, cock your lever e for each shot. While it is cocked, um, we'll give it a trigger pull. <laughs> this should be funny because, my God, guys, the trigger is just... It's just not good. It's just not good. So let's give it a pull, see what it's doing. Okay. Okay. Five pounds, one ounce. That sounds all right-ish. Okay. Um, but it just feels horrible. It feels horrible. Now, let's just put that back. Um, because it's a ball pop, um, and I know it is a fine art getting the getting triggers right on a ball pop. Obviously, all the, the sort of working parts are here, 
and your triggers here and the way they do it is they basically use a linkage okay to go all the way back here and that's why bulb up triggers aren't amazingly refined um, unless you look at something for example like the Daystate Pulsar which uses an electronic trigger so instead of any mechanical goings on inside it's literally a switch with a, a wire so there's, there's nothing mechanical going on for a, a PCP under 500 quid here in the UK you ain't gonna get an electronic trigger are you so you've kind of got to put up with it but I just thought well just sort of showing you you can just see the linkage in there see that bar there don't know whether you can see that moving when I'm pulling the trigger um, uh, it, it's all right it does say that you can adjust the trigger but I can't see anywhere where you actually can um, maybe you can maybe you can sort of tweak it a little bit but I just found it a bit I don't know un an unpredict unpredictable trigger is just a little bit I don't know I just didn't like it sorry guys I didn't like it the trigger blade itself uh, it's nothing amazing you know um, it is what it is and the trigger guard is a bit of a letdown it just looks like an afterthought they're like uh, when they made this rifle it just seems like they're like oh dude we forgot to put a trigger guard on has anyone got metal work class later um, so I think that's a bit naff the trigger guard myself I think it's a bit I don't know it's not great the trigger guard but but like I said as I'm sort of you know nitpicking it is under 500 pounds okay so and it does look cool it definitely looks cool so right and accuracy now just grabbing a target uh, I've not written on this target but I do know what it was these were my best shots and they were with, um, what pellets were they now? I use a selection of pellets, I did write this down somewhere. These were, this was with, sorry, um, super domes. That was it, super domes. Super domes is what I got the best results with and I did try Acupels, uh, Sovereigns, uh, what else? Um, Field Target Trophy. Uh, I tried a selection. The best results um, I got were with the uh, RWS Super Domes. 30 yards, that is what I got. Three shot groups, I think I did do a, a two shot group and a four shot group somewhere. There wasn't a flyer, it was just a kind of lost count what I was doing. Um, that's not a bad group, that's not a bad group. That is, I think, a two-shot hole, and then there's the four-shot. Um, I don't know what happened there. I don't know why I did that, and that's a good group there. So, um, best results from, from myself shooting this, and bear in mind I was shooting it left-handed with not a particularly great scope, was RWS Super Domes. But that was at 30 yards. People are like, oh, why are you testing an air rifle at 30 yards? 30 yards is my test range um, and it's about your average sort of range for you know shooting pigeon or rabbit or whatnot generally 30 yards is about average so it's, it's just a it's a good test sort of distance so you know a lot of people seem to question me that but it is what it is my test range is 30 yards so Accuracy isn't that bad uh, at all, really. Um, you know, so all in all, I think it's not a bad, it's not a bad rifle at all. I mean, I've tested the, um, you've seen the videos uh, on this channel, uh, the Crow Puncher Breaker. I thought that was pretty cool, a uh, real cool rifle. But this thing just doesn't seem as refined. It's, it's kind of, you kind of expect it was a, a puncher breaker inside this ballpup configuration but i don't know it's because it's i suppose the tactical version i guess it, it does look tactical 
Um, you can get them in different colours, by the way. I think they do like blue, OD, God knows what else colours, but they do do them in different colours. But as you can see, the black is the black does look cool. It does look cool, but I don't know. It's just not as refined as the puncher breaker. Um, and I was quite impressed with the, the puncher breaker. But this thing, I, I just think the trigger. The trigger just lets it down a little bit. Maybe it'd wear in a little bit, but straight out of the box, you know. Um, ish, ish. <laughs> the trigger is, I won't give it too much grief. Um, I didn't mention the safety catch. There's the safety catch. It's nice and recessed in there. I kind of like that, where you can't sort of knock it. And it's manual as well, no automatic safety. I hate auto safeties on a multi-shot shotgun. Multi-shot shotgun, what am I on about? I've done that many multi-shot shotguns and got them on my brain. Multi-shot air gun or PCP. Um, I just I just like a manual safety catch. I do on, on any uh, air gun or, or firearm or shotgun. I, I just like a manual safety catch. Um, but yeah, the safety catch is all right. It's not noisy. Um, you know, it's recessed. It's sort of out of the way. It's pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, so yeah, the Corel Puncher Armour, um, it definitely, definitely looks the business, um, there's no doubt about it. Um, like I said, uh, it's not left hand friendly, which is a shame, um, you know, with all these ball pops that are out at the minute, and I'm sure there's going to be a load more, there's not many of them that you can sort of swap out to left-handed or to sort of basically make make ambidextrous. And I think that's a shame. I mean, would it take much to sort of swap out, you know, a few little bits just to, you know, in the field to turn it to left-handed? I mean, obviously, if you're left-handed, you're going to opt for an, a left-handed rifle. Um, but... I don't know. It'd just be just be cool if you, or at least, give you give us lefties the choice of buying one in left hand rather than saying, uh, sorry, it's only in right hand," you know. Um, and I'm pretty sure they don't do these in left hand. But but hey ho. The manual that you get with the uh, armor is pretty good as well. It gives you well basically all the um, all the models that they do apart from the armor you can't actually see the armor there but it is pretty much um you know more or less uh, the same gun as the the breaker for example um but yeah it nice glossy sort of uh, manual how to adjust everything you know all your general do's and don'ts um all in english as well which is nice uh, nice colour photographs, uh, exploded diagrams, or in this case, exploded photographs, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, nice, nice manual. In fact, I'm going to actually say one of the best manuals uh, I've seen for an air rifle in a long time. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Good job, uh, Krell. That is it. That is your rack and lay review of the Krell Puncher Armour. It looks the business, there's no doubt about it. It's just that trigger, just that trigger and it's on ambidextrousness that I'm not so keen on. But apart from that, it is cool, it is cool. And for under 500 pounds here in the UK, uh, probably the cheapest ball pop uh, PCP on the market I don't know it's certainly it's certainly got to be uh, one of the cheapest anyway so anyway guys that is it that is your rack and load review of the Krell Puncher Armour thanks for watching see ya